So this problem states a five meter copper pipe is used to connect and distribute water from a holding tank to a bathroom faucet. If at the time of installation, the temperature of the pipe was measured at 16 degrees Celsius, and after running hot water through it, it raises to 80 degrees Celsius. The working length, assuming free expansion, of the pipe will be most close to what? So in this problem, we have a few new terms that are presented to us. And we are told that we have a pipe that is installed originally at some initial length, but that it has a working length, which is what we are asked to define. Now, this tells us that to some degree, the length of the pipe will be changing or deforming when we put it into operation. So before we go any further, we need to establish what is actually happening here. What thermal expansion is or deformation is and ultimately how to account for it as we go into the real world with our designs. So what is thermal expansion? Generally speaking, thermal expansion is the change in size or volume of a given specimen as the temperature of that specimen is changed. Now this specimen can be a material in any form, a liquid or a solid. If it experiences a change in temperature, it will either expand or contract. Now most materials will expand when heated and contract with, uh, as they are cooled. Now there are two specific key elements that we will dive, that will drive thermal deformations. First and the most obvious is that any expansion or contraction will be directly related to a change in temperature or temperature change. The greater that change in temperature, the greater the deformation. Second, given a temperature gradient, the actual extent of the deformation will depend on the material experiencing that temp temperature difference. This is simply stating that not all materials deform at the same rate. The variable that defines to what extent a material will expand or contract is called the coefficient of thermal expansion which may all, you may also hear referred to as the coefficient of linear thermal expansion or simply CTE. So what is the coefficient of thermal expansion? The coefficient of thermal expansion is a material property that indicates to what extent a material will expand upon heating. Different materials and substances expand by different amounts. Over small temperature ranges, the thermal expansion of a uniform linear object is proportional to the temperature change. Now know this, on the FE exam and in the problems that we will be working on and running through in this session, we can hold this assumption. So because it's a uniform linear object, it's going to be directly proportional to that temperature, temp temperature change. Now the coefficient of thermal expansion is defined as the fractional increase in length per unit rise in temperature. We can reference and pull the values of this coefficient of thermal expansion for various materials on page 84 of our NCES reference handbook and that's version 9.4 and specifically if you look here on page 84 it's that top table we see in the fifth column to the right and then again on this lower table we can find the coefficient of thermal expansions defined for various alloys and this is uh, in this table will specifically be referencing that very last column. 
Now, thermal expansion is critical in design and application of engineering designs, and if not accounted for properly, can generate catastrophic internal stresses and ultimately failure. So let's get back into our problem. Now recall that we are asked to determine the working length of a pipe that is used to distribute water between a holding tank and a bathroom faucet. Let's scratch out what we are given. So we know that the length of our copper pipe is five meters originally. We know that the original temperature at the time of installation is 16 degrees Celsius. We know that the material is going to raise to a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. We know that from the illustration or the diagram that the diameter is 13 millimeters. So let's check to see what the NCS reference handbook tells us about thermal expansion or specifically thermal deformations in this case. So we're flipping back to page 80. This is again version 9.4 in CES reference handbook version 9.4. What does it tell us about thermal deformations? We can hone in on this little section right here. It's titled thermal deformations. Surprise. So this will be our primary formula we will start all of our problems with. Now this problem tells us that if we have some object or some member of length L which is taken through some thermal cycle where the temperature changes from T naught to T, then we are able to determine how much that member will deform or change in length, that's delta, by taking all the data alongside the specific temperature coefficient of expansion or also called the coefficient of thermal expansion as it, it is defined in the given tables in our reference handbook. Now remember that the coefficient of thermal expansion the f is the fractional increase in length per unit rise in temperature. So when all is said and done, the temperature units will cancel, cancel out, leaving us with the units of the length as it is defined. So let's go ahead and take this general formula back to our problem statement. Now I noted this here as the free thermal expansion or the free thermal deformation formula. Why did I do that? So our problem statement is telling us to assume free expansion. So it's the pipe is going to be free to expand or go through free thermal expansion. So with that being said, there are you need to know there are two types of thermal expansion. There's free and constrained. So what is the difference? When calculating thermal expansion, it is necessary for us to consider whether or not the object or the member is free to expand. This will be of the utmost importance for several reasons down the road. But let's establish the difference be between the two right now. If the object is free to expand, then the expansion or strain resulting from an increase in temperature can be simply calculated using the thermal deformation formula that we pulled from the NCES reference handbook and the applicable coefficient of thermal expansion. If, on the other hand, the object is constrained so that it cannot expand, then we will need to take another approach to dealing with the expansion since there will now be internal stresses caused by the change in temperature coupled with the fact that that piece or that member is constrained from expanding even though it wants to. Now we will illustrate this in later examples but essentially the stress can be calculated using a two-step process. First we will determine the expansion that would occur if the body were free to expand and then second 
we will determine the stress that would occur if we completely prevented that free expansion from occurring. So essentially we would reduce the change in length down to zero, which naturally will create those internal stresses. We will use the stress-strain relationships, Hooke's law, that we defined in the previous session, which is characterized by the Young's modulus or the modulus of elasticity. We have all the important theoretical information defined for us. Let's get to determining the working length of this pipe and then move more rapidly through a few more examples. Now looking at our free thermal expansion formula along with the data we have been presented in our problem statement, we know that we have the length defined, we have the original temperature T naught, and we have the working temperature after hot water is run through the pipe. We have most all the vari variables defined that we need except for the coefficient of thermal expansion. Now we know that we can get this using the tables presented to us in the NCES supplied reference handbook. As long as we know the material, which in this case we do, and that's copper. So hopping back to our tables on page 84 of the NCES reference handbook and honing in on this upper table of material properties, we know that we will be pulling our coefficient from the fifth column that I just highlighted with blue. Now knowing that we are working with a copper pipe, we reference this line and find that the coefficient of thermal expansion will be 9.3 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Fahrenheit or 16.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 6 degree Celsius. So which one are we going to use? Is it going to be 9.3 or 16.6? .6? Let me hop back over to the problem statement. Which one is most appropriate to use? Which is a very, very common mistake to make, but you see that our problem statement right now is giving us everything in degrees Celsius. So for that reason, that's the variable we're going to use. So if you hop back over to our table and bring back that uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, it will be 16.6 .6 times 10 to the negative six per degree Celsius. So with all that, with the coefficient of thermal expansion now defined, we have all the variables we need. All we need to do is simply place those into our formula, pump them into our calculator, and determine that the change, the thermal expansion, the thermal deformation of this copper pipe it's going to be 0 0.0053. So that's the thermal expansion, the change in length. But we're not done here. That's an important piece of data we need, but we actually are asked to determine what the working length is. So the working length is simply taking our original length and then either adding or subtracting what the delta will be based on our change in temperature. Now in this case, we're increasing and raising the temperature which then gives us an uh, expansion of our copper pipe of 0 0.0053. So all we need to do is plug in the data that we already have to determine that our working length is going to be 5.005 meters. So that's our answer. And the correct answer, looking at our answer options, is going to be set selection or option C, 5.005 meters.